Welcome to the last chapter on Point Set Topology Core Part 1. So this will be topological groups and topological vector spaces. The interaction of algebraic operation of addition, scalar multiplication, etc. with the Euclidean topology on the one hand and the important example that we had, Banach spaces, right? So they are very important. Okay, so what are the Banach? One Banach space we can emphasize, namely the set of all bounded functions on a given uh, set, right? So all these things together motivate the study of the so called topological groups on the one hand and topological vector spaces on the other. Okay. So this last chapter is devoted to a brief introduction to these two concepts. The first section is just a brief introduction to topological groups and the next section we will have take up topological vector spaces. Okay. It is no way claimed that this is exhaustive or comprehensive. This is just a brief introduction. Okay, let me start with uh, recalling the, the definition of what is a group first so that I can use those notations comfortably. I assume that you know already groups because we have even studied group actions, right? So a little bit of group theory, whatever groups, homomorphisms, subgroups, etc. I suppose you know, but let me recall them first for ready reference also. First of all, you may treat a group as a you know order triple of a set G and a binary operation mu and a distinguished element E where G is a set, mu is G cross G to G, that is the meaning of binary operation, which is associative. If you have a short notation, we will use mu of G comma H as G composite H. So G and H are elements of G. G circ H is also inside G. You may read it as G composite H or G circ H. Axiom of identity, there is one axiom which means another, another condition here is that this distinguished element is called identity. Why? Because its action on other elements, E composite G is G and on the right side of G composite E is also G for every G. Okay, so it is acting identically on other elements, that is why. The third axiom is that for every G in G, there exists a unique element G inverse. Okay. So G to the minus one, we read it as G inverse such that what is the property G composite G inverse equal to G inverse composite G is the identity. Okay. The element e is called the identity element, which I have been referring to. For every G in G, the element G inverse is called actually inverse of G. We will also use the short expression G is a group, just like with X is a topological space. So we can suggest that G is a group instead of writing the triple G, mu, E, etc. each time. Often, even the simple notation is composite. Instead of mu of GH, we are writing G circ H, but but most often when there are no other compositions, you will just write it as GH. If there are two, three compositions, then we have distinguished. You can't write all of them as GH. 
okay even even there are uh, two different groups okay one is a domain and another codomain we are using the same gh here and g prime h prime there to to mean that they we have to take the corresponding multiplications from g and g prime respectively so such a uh, uh, short uh, you know you know short notations or abuse of notation which is there in the practice by stalwarts all the way goes back to uh, you know euler and so on we can't change that so we better follow those rules in a group g if the composition happens to have this property namely g composite h to h composite g for all g and h then g is called an abelian group or a commutative group okay this is similar to the case of uh, integers rational numbers real numbers and so on so there the standard notation is plus g plus right g plus to g composite h but that is not forced on us because there may be more than one composition both of them commutative okay so then you have to choose which one is plus plus and plus prime and so on so that is also not it is only customary though you have to follow the customs here rather than rigid rules rigid rules will be followed you know logically in our mind that much we have to do by abuse this abuse of notations it just means that you are not going to get confused by this notation <laughs> that is the whole idea okay let g be a group together with a topology on the underlying set g such that the the product map namely x comma y going to x y inverse that i am going to denote by mu for a y that must be continuous okay what is the continuity here g is a topological group it means it has topology okay so if a multiplication is here then condition is that this multiplication is continuous means what here there is a topology here i have to take the product topology okay the product topology from given topology on both g and g here that's what i have to take under that this must be continuous okay we then call g is a topological group a subgroup h of g together with the subspace topology will be called a topological subgroup provided what what you have to do the group operation is also the same because it's a subgroup okay so however when the context is clear we may simply mention this as a subgroup likewise homomorphisms from g to h between topological groups okay are always assumed to be continuous unless mentioned otherwise okay pre composing the continuous function mu from g cross g to g by y going to e comma y see y going to e comma y is a group of is a continuous function from g to g cross g right it's like a coordinate inclusion follow it by xy going to xy inverse e becomes x so this x becomes e sorry so this becomes just y going to y inverse so that map i am denoting by eta y it's called the inversion map eta y is y inverse because y inverse is uniquely defined okay this map is called what inversion map it is called it, it, it becomes continuous by the very by this observation there is no i am not making this as a hypothesis now this is a follow this is a consequence because it is a composite of these two functions 
likewise if you take xy going to see first composite mu and then take eta so xy going to xy inverse is what identity comma eta right therefore these are so continuous now composite with xy inverse that will become xy going to xy the mu of x comma y inverse is x y inverse y inverse right so that is equal to xy so this is it's actually the multiplication map mu which we started with that will be also continuous so in one single go by taking this definition namely xy going to xy inverse uh, we have made taking inverse taking inverse of inverse of an element also taking x going to xy both of them are continuous okay once you have both of them continuous you can recover the continuity of mu g inverse uh, continuous new net name xy going to xy inverse also so they are equivalent instead of one uh, definition you may have two different conditions combined with that one it will give you the first condition so they are equivalent okay so 32 and 33 together imply continuity of mu also all right so here are some examples now any group together with the discrete topology or in discrete topology is it a polygon group see you have already a group so group operation you don't have to change you put a topology we are very familiar with putting lots of different topology right? you put a topology discrete topology cross discrete topology is discrete the codomain is discrete but any function from a discrete topology to any other space is always always what continuous similarly indiscrete index to indiscrete any function into an indiscrete space is also continuous so out of this discrete topology is not so disinteresting we have already done one of them namely action of a discrete at uh, a discrete group on a set and so on but the latter is namely indicative topology is most disinteresting one we will never have an occasion to use that one okay but what uh, may one what may you know trigger a, some thought process here is that these two extremities are there right they are both topological groups without change a group so you you may think that topological groups after all have no special properties at all the topology for a topological group may not have no extra properties at all if at all there are properties it must be because of the group theory you may see wait a minute that is not the case so we are going to prove something out of this maybe you you may think it's nothing okay so not all topology topologies on a topological group even if you change the group structure maybe will be uh, topological groups so we will see such things mm -hmm. so that being the abstract part let us come back to some reality namely genuine and uh, useful examples the real numbers complex numbers these were the motivating examples for them for us for this abstract uh, definition right along with standard addition and standard you know if you take a non zero complex number there is multiplication also they are all topological groups right the complex numbers of unit length they form a closed subgroup of the respective multiplication topological groups complex or real numbers 
okay if you take unit length of a real number is just minus 1 plus 1 that's some group similarly the circle okay unit circle is a sub group of the non zero complex numbers under multiplication okay so these are the easy examples any finite dimensional vector space or k is also a topological group i am only looking at the addition the scalar multiplication is there we will study them little later similarly our example namely i, I told you about panax spaces the set of all bounded functions on x taking values in either r or c okay that was a banach algebra right so there the addition will be automatically continuous with respect to the topology induced by the norm the norm is supremum norm okay one of the most interesting case of all these topological groups occur inside the matrix matrices of you know n cross and matrices addition there already makes it a topological group okay even the multiplication just like the in the case of complex numbers and real numbers of course you have to throw away the zero the zero matrix right not only zero matrix you have to throw away this time you have to throw away a lot more namely all matrices of determinant not equal to zero determinant equal to zero you have to throw away so in other words you have to take only invertible n cross n matrices invertibility with respect to multiplication so that will form a group and the group laws are continuous how do you take inverse of a of an invertible matrix n cross n matrix each entry will be a polynomial namely the ij j i cofactor divided by the determinant so it is polynomial divided by polynomial but the denominator is non zero therefore they are continuous okay so gln k forms a what a group and the group laws are continuous with respect to what with respect to the euclidean topology there gln k is an open sub open subset of all k k you know n cross n i have writing which i have told you earlier namely you write it as you know uh, n cross n vector you think of that as n cross n vector so that way you get a euclidean topology on that okay similarly you can look at on which is defined as all those matrices real matrices okay so set a a transpose is identity if you take complex matrices and then take a a star namely conjugate transpose right a a star that's equal to identity that will be called the unitary group so verification that their groups is easier it is linear algebra matrix theory the only missing thing was why the group multiplications are continuous you can separately verify that a comma b going to ab is continuous by looking at the matrix entries of this product they are all polynomials then you have to look at whenever this is invertible then how to write down the inverse so for writing the inverse you have the kramer's rule which says take the a joint matrix which is again each entry is a polynomial in the original one then each entry you have to divide by the determinant of the given polynomial given matrix so there is also another polynomial right so that is the whole idea of this glnc 
okay and gln k in general glnr and gln c are special cases they have various subgroups i have denoted only two of them here on and sun here then you can take groups with the determinant one also here they will also form another subgroup smaller subgroup and so on so these are groups and many many other groups are you know central to a lot of mathematics and there are theories here a small aspect of this you can call them as matrix groups which will lead to what are called as later on a deep theory very beautiful theory lie groups which we will not be able to do okay so let us uh, stop here and take up these discussions next time okay thank you